likeness father thank you father I pray oh God that you will just take over our lives this yes, morning as a yes, church yes. we ask you that you will just take control of our lives Lord. have your way in our lives father you are the potter we are the clay come on church just say Lord do what you have to do in my life do as you please oh God do your work in my life sometimes that breaking and that and that shaping can be so painful but just say Lord I yield to you I trust you God I trust you for the work that you have started in my life I trust you because you are the perfect potter thank you Father Lord I give my life into the potter's hands Lord, use me, Lord, fill me, Lord. I give my life into your hands.
trust in you, Father. We trust you for our life, for our days. For everything is in your hands, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we are just still in your presence. Have your way in us, oh God. just enjoy the stillness in God's presence. Just be still and know that He is God. He is in our midst. He is here touching every heart, touching every mind, touching every body. He loves us. He cares for us. He fights for us. He stands for us. He supports us. He guides us. He's our all in all.
There is no one like you There is no one like you You are holy You are holy, holy Holy Lord Who can compare to you Lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands and say, Holy, 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 holy Lord. Let's sing that chorus again. Acknowledging. can compare to you O Lord God there is no one who compares to you there is no one who is like you in any way in any way absolutely any way you are righteous you are just you are faithful you are holy you are all of these dear God you are good you are kind, you are gentle. In all your ways, you are loving. And there is no one who can compare even in your love to us because you have loved us with an everlasting love. You are caring. You are the one who leads us. You're always your presence as a true shepherd ought to be just as the psalmist acknowledges he leads me he makes me he guides me he feeds me he protects me as long as the sheep follows the shepherd the shepherd ensures all of these so holy spirit of god may we be such who follow your leading may we be such who follow your word may we be such who live in obedience to your word not just because we might have a christian name or we may have been baptized in water that we think that we are entitled to all of this no 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 it is only our obedience to you and our relationship with you that ensures your blessings especially of your presence with us may we ever be so mindful of these facts lord jesus by your holy spirit we want to thank you for your kindness and your goodness for your faithfulness lord great is your mercy towards us great is your faithfulness great is your grace upon us it is incomparable and this morning we acknowledge that whatever we are wherever we are in our lives it is only because of your grace upon us holy spirit of god this morning we ask that you would come and have your way in our midst have your way right where we are this morning even as we are standing and then we'll be seated in your presence we ask that you would come have your way take your place in this in this house where we have gathered and we look forward to 
having a blessed and wonderful time when you minister to us when you speak to us through your servants when you come and do things inside of us that need to be taken care of there are certain people dear lord who need a touch from you they may need it in their physical bodies they may need it in their stressed out minds they may need it in their disturbed hearts they may need it in certain areas of their lives you know who needs what and you know where they need to be touched lord after a week of probably much stress stress or much struggle lord this morning when your people have come there may be some who are really really questioning even their existence there may be some who may be questioning why am i even alive what is my objective here on this earth there may be those who have these myriads of questions lord holy spirit you are the only one who can minister to such you are the only one who can convince such who are going through these situations and therefore i pray this morning even as we are here in your presence may all oh lord be touched of you may all sense your presence uh, may all feel you doing something in their life and in their situation oh lord uh, because we na- we need uh, we stand in the need of your touch uh, we stand in the need of your intervention we stand in the need of you doing something thing oh lord in our lives and so this morning every heart which is open every mind which is receptive i pray you would touch i pray you would bless i pray you would anoint hallelujah we give you praise we thank you for your presence here today be glorified in every word that is spoken be glorified in every song that has been sung be glorified in everything that is done jesus be glorified hallelujah we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor because you alone deserve it hallelujah in jesus name amen amen god bless you may be seated so i would like you to turn in your bibles to the epistle of paul to ephesians chapter 6 Ephesians chapter 6 Finally be strong in the Lord Be strong in the Lord Can we all shout together be strong in the Lord Be strong in the Lord Amen Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power and that is why we have a we have a a source a resource from where we can tap in and enjoy strength be strong in the lord put on the full armor of god can you shout full armor of god we are not helpless god through his holy spirit has well equipped his church his church is you and i to be overcomers put on the full armor of god so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes for our struggle is not against flesh and blood first of all let us understand that my struggle is not with any one of you i love you we have you know the lord has been working in my own life and i could see how he delights in meeting our spiritual needs and approaches him for our struggle is not against flesh and blood 
but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil where in the heavenly realm spiritual forces these are spiritual forces evil spirits forces and we need to be very well aware of this otherwise we will be caught unaware Forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. Shout everybody, full armor of God. Full armor of God. Every, let not the, the volume of your throat go down. Full armor of God. And all of you seated there, you are nearer to God, but nevertheless you can also shout. Don't be quiet there. Praise God. <laughs> nice to see all of you. Those who are seated down, those who are seated higher places. Amen. Stand firm then with the belt of uh, truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Keep on praying. Amen. This is a marvelous and wonderful passage of the scriptures. What a wonderful God we have who makes provisions for our victorious living. And he doesn't want any of his children who claim or who profess that you belong to him and he lives in you. He is the most important person in your life. And the Bible should be the most important book in your in your heart and in your home and everywhere. And so my title is Be Strong. Be Strong. Shout everybody, Be Strong. Be strong. Hallelujah. Can I have you also joining us, brothers and sisters sitting there, everybody shout, Be Strong. Whatever we are shouting, we are shouting God's word. Never shrink back. Be strong. And that is the realm. And so, now, when the Bible says, when the Apostle Paul through the Holy Spirit admonishes us, be strong, it is not a suggestion. But be strong is a command. It is not a suggestion. It is not an option for God's people. We need to be strong. And Jesus paid all the prices in order for his people to be strong. And so if you are not strong, if I am not strong, it's our problem. Not God's problem. You know, many, very often we blame God. Why did he allow? He does not allow. He only allows good things in your life. Then why bad things happen? Our disobedience. So when the Bible says to be strong, it is not just a suggestion, but it is a command. A command cannot... There are only two options. What to do with a command? Either you say no, or you say yes. No, there is no other option. 
So are you going to come obey the command or just ignore it and disobey? Then that will be your loss and my loss. Let it not happen. Let us take this command very seriously and be obeyed. You know, I, I, I want to deal with, uh, with this uh, topic this morning uh, very simply. And everyone can understand what I'm going to share. And my language is so simple that even a child can easily understand me. And so, how can we obey this command? That is a question. If it is a command, I must obey. Now how can I obey? <coughs> how can we obey this command? How can we be strong? I don't think any of us want to be weak in our spiritual life. Am I right? Don't you want to be strong? We all want to be strong. I want to be strong. I've been in the battlefield actually in the forefront in North India. On May 17th, just it's passed us by. I completed 40, 54 years of missionary work in North India. And what years I have gone through. Had it not been God's mercy and His strengthening presence and encouraging promises, I would have been perished. But thank God I am still standing. Praise God. There are two things we must do in order to be strong. Number one, by putting on the full armor of God, verse 11. So put on the full armor of God. There is no point in going around uh, thinking how weak I am, how weak we are, and how tired I am. No, you don't have to be weak, you don't have to be tired, and you don't have to struggle for the armor. You don't have to spend even a one rupee in order to go to the market and buy this armor. By the way, the armor you cannot buy in any of the world's markets. You won't find them anywhere. The Indian Army can never manufacture the armor against the evil one. And so there is no point in going around saying how weak I am, how weak we are. God knows it. And you know it yourself and we all know. And so what did God do? He made a provision. Of course we are weak. There is a song that we are, I am weak, but thou art strong. But he is strong, the one with whom I walk daily is by my side. And then to realize that this person is not only really walking with me, he covers me all four sides, behind, in front, and left, and right. 
And then more importantly, this dear friend who never leaves me, he gets inside of me. And that happened about 70 years ago. When I opened my heart, and he never left me. We all know, of course, and the devil knows how weak we are. And the Lord also knows how weak we are. So he is not blaming us. Because he has given us enough. That's why God has given us his armor. Put on the full armor of the Lord. You know something special about it? So that we might be strong and equipped to fight the enemy. And if you check the tag on this armor, there you will see, you know, every the made in South Korea, made in America, made in so and so place, made in India. And what will you read on this? Can anyone imagine? You will read in bold letters, made in heaven. Hallelujah. Everybody say, made in heaven armor. That's what God is giving us. And who is actually the designer? God the Father. God the Father. God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. The triune God joined together and manufactured this armor. That's why it is called armor of God. Hallelujah. God made it for me. It is heaven made. Glory to God. Say heaven made armor. Is available to you and to me. And so the Lord who knows that the enemy is a tricky fellow and uh, he is like a roaring lion. He is not the real lion but he pretends to be lion and he tries to roar and come. And so put on the whole armor. There are several um, several weapons there in this one armor the whole armor you cannot miss even one single one so that we might be strong and equipped to fight the enemy and we praise the Lord for this armor that is available and a closer look at the armor you will see that this armor is equal to Anyone can fill it up? This armor is equal to putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. This whole armor is Jesus Christ. And that's why several occasions, Apostle Paul in his epistles urged us to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Constantly abide in him. I am the vine and you are the branches. And a branch cannot bring forth the fruit unless that branch abides in me. And that is not a one time a week experience. It is a moment by moment experience of abiding. You cannot be separated from Jesus even for one second. In order to bring forth the fruit. 
and our Lord, our Father, delight to see His children walking in victory. He had made all the provisions. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Romans chapter 13. Somebody who found it, you can also read loudly, okay? Ah. How to satisfy? How to? Rectify the desires of the flesh. Put on... Amen. Christ is presented here as the armor for the believers. So that is the equal to Jesus saying, Abide in me. Have a careful look at what the Apostle said. He does not exhort the saints to simply put on temperance in place of drunkenness or put on chastity in place of adultery. That's not what he says. What will be that work? That will be patchwork. Patchwork will never work in f battling with the devil. So you make some improvement here, you make a certain other changes here, that is not. It is absolutely a total transformation, a change from your old into a new life. The whole, the whole of us become new. So, instead, he tells them, Apostle Paul said, you make some improvement there, you know, no, he didn't say that. But, but what did he tell them? To put on the Lord Jesus Christ, the whole person of Jesus Christ, put him on. And that's the way you can be an overcomer. I want to be an overcomer. That is what God desired of us. Overcome. Hallelujah. Everybody, just lift your hands up towards God and say, Lord, I want to be an overcomer. I want to be an overcomer. Let these words come out of your mouth. I want to be an overcomer. That is what God wants. It is the provision. It is, that is the provision that God is given. He does not give a little bit, little bit, little bit. And so we don't manufacture our own armor because we need spiritual armor. This armor that is mentioned here this God-given, heaven-made armor alone will protect you and me from the devil's attack and his strategies. 
what he sees, he sees that all of us are putting on Jesus Christ and going in. So you would, there are 200 people here this morning. What does that mean? Let the devil look on us and see 200 Jesus sitting. Everybody has the same dress. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, from the youngest to the oldest. Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this God-given, heaven-made armor alone will protect you. Jesus, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put him on. <coughs> you cannot fight this battle with the devil and, and all the temptations that he brings, you know. We cannot battle this with our own strength and our own whatever we make, try to make. You cannot fight the battle with Satan with any armor of your own make. Determine that you cannot. Good works, nothing. Jesus Christ Himself is your armor. And uh, you cannot even have a borrowed armor. And try to no no I I don't I don't have it fully in me now. It will take little more time. I am praying about getting baptized. I am praying about being filled with the Holy Spirit. I am praying, praying, praying. Praying is not what is needed. Obedience is needed. So don't pray. Whatever God has commanded us to do, don't pray about it. Go ahead and obey it. We all are still praying. For what? What we need to pray is all given in our... The subjects are all given in, in this book. What we need to pray for. Oh, what a glorious God we have. Do you remember David and Goliath? You know, ultimately, King Saul was convinced to perhaps this boy will be able to go and fight. But nevertheless, he thought this fellow has no other, just a tonic and uh, a sling with a stone. What is he going to, how is he going to fight with this? The huge giant standing there who is well experienced and who is fully equipped with the armors. And so Saul the king removed his tunic and put it on Saul, I mean David. David was only this much. And then he removed his uh, battle armor whatever it was, and put it on. And then David started practicing little bit, so walking up and down, and he came back to that, listen, I am not used to all these things. And he removed everything and threw it. Never, never borrow anything from somebody else. You must personally experience the Lord Jesus Christ and put him on. Many of us try to depend on somebody else's prayer. As we keep receiving phone calls in the night, also 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, Pastor, 
they, they sounded frantic. Pastor, what happened? I called Savas Master Sami, but he is not picking up the phone. And now I, I am glad that I got you. Ah, what, what's wrong with you? What, what's your problem? He said, I got a headache, and I have fever, and I have stomachache, and I have all this. And uh, uh, I asked that I am going to die, and before I die, I must have a Holy Communion. Will you please come and serve me Holy Communion? And all this kind of thing. How long has he been a believer? Baptized? Many years. You are supposed to go and minister to somebody else and help that person to know Jesus. And you are crying like a baby, ignorant baby still. What a shame it is. And sometimes therefore we have to be strict. We love people. We want them to grow up. Yes, we, it is not our business to go around with the communion set. Anybody wants the which home? Anybody sick here? We don't do that. Well, we, sometimes we do that even a person is breathing his last breath. He's dying. He's uh, better than, better than, helpless. He served the Lord. Worship God. We, they, they don't even have to tell us. We do it. So we'll have to sometimes tell you, you do one thing. First of all, you are not going to die. You pray, kneel down and pray. God will hear your prayer. And don't cry like a baby. It's a shame. And I tell you, my brothers and sisters, you are experiencing this life for the last many years, it is time for you to be a strong person in the Lord. Be strong. How? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and walk in the Spirit. So he removed everything and he had the same tunic and the sling and the stone. And he didn't have to use all the five stones by the way he took. He used only one stone. Some people have made big doctrines out of these five stones of David and everything. But he, whatever doctrine, five doctrines, ten doctrines, he used only one doctrine. <laughs> and he used that doctrine. <laughs> and the giant came tumbling down on it. Instead of the, the giant uh, falling on David, David ran and stood on that giant. That is the kind of faith because David had put on the whole armor of God while Saul the king and the soldiers and the commanders of the, soul, uh, the army they were all wasting their time by looking at the giant and measuring the giant. Oh how tall he is. Look at his helmet. My goodness, I won't be able to even carry that. And look at his sword and his spear and look at his shoes. And they were, they were looking at him and measuring the giant. 
David didn't spend a single moment in measuring that giant because he has already measured his God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You do have you ever measured your God? Even the heaven of heavens cannot contain our God. Heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. And God challenged the people of Israel to how are you going to make a house for me? And David knew how great and how big his God is. His God is bigger than all the giants put together. Make a huge mountain of giants. And God is still bigger than that giant. Your God is bigger than you. Your God is bigger than your greatest problem. Your God is bigger than your greatest fear. Your God is bigger than the worst kind of sickness. Your God is mightier than any force in the universe as you can imagine. Your God is higher and bigger and greater and mightier than anything that you can imagine. Your God is worthy therefore all your praises and worship and all you need to do is look to this God and you will find that the, your biggest problems will be reduced to nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. And you lift up your hands and say Lord you are bigger than anything else. Thank you Jesus. As, uh, as usual, I won't be able to finish the message. What time I finish? Are I? Okay. I want to finish at least outline. God is... How wonderful. Every time you are faced, let me give an advice to all of you. If you love the Lord and you worship Him, any time you face a problem, immediately you confess, my God is bigger than this problem. Number one. Number two, God already knows that it was coming to me. And so I know that he knows it, even if no one else knows it. Amen. And then you remember, Jesus Christ is the right hand of God, the Father. What is his ministry today? What is his ministry? Interceding for you. My Jesus is interceding for me. And so I will be here, all right. We will come through it. Don't blame your husband, don't blame your wife. It is none of your problems. It is the devil trying to discourage you and frighten you and, uh, and, and uh, take away your confidence from this God. So then you confess, God is bigger than this problem I am facing. This is nothing for God. Amen. God makes his saints armor. He also trains them in its proper use. Verses 11 to 13. Ephesians chapter 6, 11 to 13. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 
for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm therefore put on the full armor of god so that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand hallelujah what a mighty god we have praise god and the second thing i want to mention here is to understand one's enemy and know how strong he is and this is an area where we all lack we don't understand how strong who is our enemy and how strong is our enemy and um, let us not make the mistake of uh, supposing that satan is not strong oh you know he has crushed his head and as we read these verses and think that he is no longer exist do so don't worry the those are there in the scriptures but you need to properly understand what it all really means if you think he is not strong he will surely overcome us because then we will not be careful about him he is much stronger than we are if we are without our armor he will defeat us that is why the instruction given in god's word put on the full armor of god because when he attacks if you don't have the armor on you will perish he has brought down um, thousands of saints of god from their high position of serving the lord preaching the gospel and healing the sick they perform miracles after miracles and yet some of them have terribly fallen because they underestimated his power how many some of the greatest preachers and today it is happening more and more for your information many pastors mighty pastors who are thousands of people in their church in the south don't ask me which state and who it was but all i can say is that is also was a, a a presbyter of the assemblies of god who had a big church big church and uh, he had a secret desire in his heart that he wanted to be a karodapadi nobody knew about it with that desire in his heart growing he was also the presbyter he was also a senior pastor of a very big church nice church one morning on a sunday morning service he stood up before them i am resigning from today of being a pastor and now on 
you look after yourself and you do whatever you want. Fortunately, he did not capture the building and the property and all that. By saying that, he said, because I found what I was looking for. So I want to enjoy that. And he walked away. The elders in his church ran after him and said, Pastor, what are you doing? You are the ones who brought us to the Lord Jesus Christ and shown us the way. You are the one who baptized us. And how many churches are under you? How can you do it? And he closed his ears and closed his eyes and he said, you look after and you do whatever you want to do. I am going and he walked away. He was looking to become a Karurpati. And he knew a Karotpadi Muslim lady. And they were very friendly. He went with her. A thousand questions can be asked. But I tell you, it is not for reason that God himself has created this armor for you and for me. What happened? He removed that armor from his. That's what happened. My brothers and sisters, it is not only for the pastors, it is not for evangelists, it is not only for deacons and committee members, it is for every single believer this instruction is given, put on the whole armor of God. How important it is. There are four things you need to know about this Satan, our enemy about Satan. Number one, he is invisible and he is a spirit. The enemy, Satan, the enemy of your soul is invisible. About Satan, four things I am telling you. Everybody say invisible. invisible. You cannot see him with these eyes. Secondly, he is very powerful. The devil is very powerful. Don't underestimate his abilities. And thirdly, he is wicked and evil. Everybody say wicked and evil. Yeah. Who? Satan. Satan is very wicked and very evil. He is the leader of all the spiritual forces of evil. And he has no mercy. There is no mercy guna in his, in Satan. No kindness. And no good in him. His one desire is to destroy by any means possible the spiritual life of every Christian. He has his eyes on every one of you from the youngest to the oldest. It doesn't matter how old you are. 
He has his eyes on all of us. Yes, and, and he's just waiting for one opportunity when he can catch you off guard. You understand? That is why the instruction, put on the whole armor of God every moment. And Jesus, that's what Jesus said, you abide in me constantly without any break, not even one second break. And the devil is watching, because he is watching, that one second that you forget Jesus he enters in. That is why the instruction somewhere else, Apostle Paul says, don't give any occasion for the devil to creep in. And thirdly, he is wicked and evil. He is the leader of all the spiritual forces. And his one desire is to destroy by any means possible the spiritual life of every believer. And fourthly, he is crafty and cunning. Can you mention that two words, crafty and cunning? Crafty. Who? Satan. Satan. Is crafty and cunning. He is craftier than any one of us. Our craftiness will not match. So please, knowing the devil's characteristics, I am instructing you. Constantly abide in Jesus. We sing that song. Constantly abiding. Jesus is mine, constantly abiding. There should be no moment when you are out of Jesus. Often, you know, he, he, he's, the Satan is like a roaring lion. He is not the real lion, but he pretends. The roaring lion. But often he does not come as a lion. Sometimes what he does is he sneaks through. He sneaks upon us suddenly. That one moment is enough for you to fall. And how many of us experience that? And then we regret, oh my pastor, I, I don't know what happened to me. I, it, in a moment it happened. Don't allow that one moment to be out of Jesus. And that is a moment when you are not watching. And, and other times he disguises himself so that we can't recognize him. He will appear in the form of an angel of light. Oh, the angel has come from heaven. That's what. Sometimes he will appear before you like a most beautiful girl. And in that beauty, in the brightness of that beauty, you become blind. <laughs> And that is a love is blind. And that is true. So don't begin to feel love for somebody who is made very attractive, very beautiful, and you feel like touching her. Billy Graham given us the right advice for the young people to avoid temptation. And one of the advice he gave her, avoid the second look. Ah, what does that mean? As you're walking along, suddenly you saw this kind of a girl going, and you, you saw a girl walking and forget it, you have no business. But the problem comes 
when you turn around, I have another look. So I am advising you young people, avoid the second look. And second look means temptation. He is like a wolf who puts on sheep's clothing. The sheep think he is just another sheep. He can impersonate. He can do all kinds of trickery. But always remember, when you have put on Jesus himself, he will take care of all these problems for him. Then he is managing. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let us stand this time. These are the four things you should know about the devil. He is very sneaky and he is very <laughs> deceiving. We must know. And now nobody has an excuse. I did not know this devil is such a crooked fellow. He is not only really crooked, he will make you crooked. He will, he himself use all the trickeries and once we fall into his trap we also use all the trickeries to escape. I want to sing a hymn and it is a prayer. Anybody pray? <coughs> God always wants you to be on a higher ground. And that higher ground is the ground that God himself has prepared for you to walk on. In faith, be on a higher ground. In love, be on a higher ground. Forgiving all. The conference I went to Delhi for two days, I have experienced something very amazing. And I realize, I knew there are certain weaknesses in me. But I realize, if I continue to walk with these same weaknesses, I will never make it. That those weaknesses will weaken me so much, I will perish. And there in that conference, God did something very, very amazing in my own personal life. And after I have shared what God the Lord has given me to share, there was a, there was a breakthrough among all the people who were there. We began to worship and then I asked them to stand and lift up your hands and worship, which they did. And as we were worshiping, the Spirit of God was moving. There was such life. And then the leaders who organized this, two of them came to me and said, Pastor, 
you are like a father figure to all of us we urge you to pray for each one of these people by laying your hand on them and i had the joy of praying for each one of them one by one by laying my hand on about 80 of them and then later on after i was about to finish i said maybe i am over suddenly i saw certain wives and husbands coming and they were they belonged to that church which they wanted prayer they were all leaders in the church and i prayed for them and i said lord i am not worthy and there i understood that i just cannot to go on the way i am i have my feelings and my thinking you know no my thinking and my feelings have no place in the kingdom of god and i know the ministry i have ahead of me so as pastor sami announced next sunday is it next sunday that i'll be ministering to the second i mean hindi congregation the way i ministered to many of you i believe that people are still experiencing healings as a result of our united prayer i was not alone i prayed with all of you and so pray that remarkable miracle i am believing god was certain conversion to happen if anybody knows the chief of the magicians here or the fellows who are doing witchcraft the head man who is the devil himself if you know such people we need to pray and i want you to start praying for some big politicians nothing is impossible with god they may be impossible people but let it be god works on the impossible only as long as you and i think it is possible he will be quiet that is why jesus took 4 days to arrive at martha and mary's because he waited why 4 days because within 3 days of death there is a possibility for the atma who is floating around to come back to the body and so the glory will go to that spirit jesus didn't believe that but the people believed it so for their sake he delayed even that possibility is gone god declare declare i am the resurrection and the life and god wants to use this church god wants to use this church this church means each and every one of you god wants to use you to bring amazing manifestation of his glory let us believe begin to pray amen hallelujah i am pressing on the upward way new heights i'm paying Ain't every day still praying as I won't word bow Lord plant my feet on higher ground 
Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith and heaven so a higher plane than I have found Lord lift me on high has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay though some may dwell where these abide my prayer my aim is higher Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven, stable land, a higher plane than I have. Lord, plant my feet. On high ground, I want to live above the world. Though Satan's darts at me are hurled, for oh, faith has got the joyful sound. The song of saints on higher Lord, lift me up And let me stand By faith on heaven's table we sing the last words I know our time is up but I encourage any one of you want a God to minister to you in a very special way this morning before you go it doesn't take God five hours three hours no as you come Maybe on the way to this altar, God can touch you and change you. So I encourage you to move to the friend and let us stand together. Oh God is able. And those of you who are standing there, you may now come down because after this altar call, you can go and live. And if you want to move forward, you can come. God is the same. He made the armor for us to have that. To put on. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ as you humble yourself and ask God, I want you on me. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam 
of a glory light but still I'll pray till heaven I found Lord lead me on to By faith on heaven, stable land, a higher plane than I have found, Lordly. you will left hand over your heart and lift up your right hand towards heaven and sing that chorus one more time. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. Oh, Lord, these are your sheep. These are your people, your children, redeemed by your blood. Cover them this morning, Lord. Let your own cry go out to God, Lord. All of you are very precious to God. He would not, if you are sincere, and if you honestly ask the Lord and tell the Lord, Lord, I just want to be with you, covered by you. Thank you. You are the armor. And in you we find all the protections for every area of temptation. Victorious. So that next time they have an opportunity to come into the house of God, they will come with a brighter smile and laughter, with a testimony, God has protected me and I bless Him, I praise Him. As you go from this place, take your step by faith saying, I am healed, I am delivered, and I am protected, and I am saved, and I am protected, well protected. And I will walk on a higher ground. Bless your people, Lord. Bless, bless, touch everyone. In Jesus' name, and Amen. Amen. Amen and Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon each one of you. And be gracious to you. As you walk out, may his presence go with you. And may him be with you in your going out and coming in, in your sitting and rising and waking and sleeping every moment. You sleep in the arms of God and you wake up in the morning in His arm. Amen. God bless you.